Hey, what's up? Um, I'm Shashi Lo, a senior UX engineer at Microsoft. I'm here today to talk to you about a DevX framework to boost team productivity. I've been part of several teams, some that were efficient, some that weren't. Um, and the most well-oiled teams were the ones that were productive. They worked well together, they had efficiencies, they had a good process. Uh, most, but most importantly, a lot of the individuals that I worked with, they had some tools and tricks to allow them to be faster at their job. Um, it gave them the tools to debug quickly. It gave them the solutions to find regressions. Um, and it also allowed us to uh, have conversations about how we can help one another be better and be more productive um, from the day-to-day -day standpoint. The first tool that I wanted to go over was Get Kraken Desktop. This is a project that I'm on. It's an open source project. Um, and, and as you can see here, um, it's a nice overview of the project. You can see all the feature branches here. On the side here, there's a lot of just milestone branches, feature branches opened up. Um, and these are all on my local. Uh, but you can see uh, the stream of work that's coming in or that is in the works right now. And I can see here, like this individual, Cody, uh, switch the sign out button, right? Like I can click on this and I can see the commit history. I can see the changes right on the screen. Um, that's a great way to kind of see what's happening and what's coming up. Um, another thing is also is you see these streams, right? These colored streams. Um, you can see here, my current stream is this dotted line. And as you can see, I am way behind on my, <laughs> my branch. There's so many things happening. But the cool thing is, like, if I look at this blue stream, right, we can see that and this is the develop branch. So this is all the things that are happening being merged into the develop branch. And then these are being branched off of the develop branch. So per se, um, a bunch of these branches are being created from develop branch. And as we go up, like we can see a history of all the things that are happening. Um, from a traditional standpoint, if you're using the command line, you, sure, you can see all this in the terminal and the command line. But visually, like I can click on these and look at the changes that are going in right from this GUI interface. It's a nice way to jump around and to be more efficient. Um, for me, I can't memorize all these Git commands. It is really difficult because I have to code on the day-to-day -day standpoint, right? The business logics, the functions I create, the data manipulation, like all these things, there's so much to learn. If I have to memorize Git commands too, that's just so many, that's just another thing that I have to worry about. Another cool feature about Git Kraken or using a GUI interface for uh, your Git uh, repository is like you can see the changes that are in your local, right? So these four files are in my local um, right now that have been modified. I'm in the data update feature branch here. Um, let's say I wanted to jump to this one, right? By, by clue here, implement menu drop down. I wanted to switch that branch, build it locally, and kind of see what's going on there so I can conduct a thorough code review. Well, I can't switch over because I have these files here that I need to stash. Well, from a click of a button, I can stash my changes. It gets saved into a stash drawer here. I can double click on this feature branch it just switched over now i'm in that branch i can go build that build my project look at and see what's happening and look all the changes that are in there as you can see there's a ton of changes in here um and then i can then say you know what i'm ready to go back to my feature branch i could double click on data update um, and the cool thing here is if you look at this stash it keeps a, a history of all your stashes right and I don't know about you, but I stash very often. And if I click on the latest one, like all my four files are there. But as you see, if I scroll down to um, any later changes, like all these changes that I've stashed are in, in history. I can see them there. Um, I can right click on this guy here and apply this stash file if I want to. Um, but 
Obviously, I don't want to. I want the latest one. So what I can do here is I can say apply stash. And it's going to apply it directly into that feature branch that I was in, which is data update. So now these four files are back into my local changes. And I'm back working again. I totally value uh, using a Git GUI. It makes your day-to-day -day so much more efficient because you do not have to worry about memorizing commands and all that. Like, think about this. If there was a Git, mer it was, if there was a merge conflict or you had to go look at a history for some certain files, it is very difficult because then you have to use command line and how do you rebase? How do you reset your head to which version? There's so many things that you have to memorize. The next tool that I wanted to go over is another Git Kraken product, and it's Git Lens. Um, so let's go right into this. So right now, this is the same project, right? It's the Grand Survivor project. This is the API functions. And um, let's say, you know, we wanted this leak parameter to be an, the entry ID instead of the leak ID. Uh, I want to know when the last time this was updated and who did it, right? So with Git Lens installed into my VS code, I could click on this line and lo and behold, look at that. I can see the history and you were the one who changed it. Well, who was you? Oh, well, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Okay. I'm the one to blame. Um, but it's as easy as that, right? I can see in line who made the changes and who didn't. But what if I wanted to see the historical value of the entire file? Well, you can do that as well. I'll go to file history and with Git Lens, it tracks the history of the files, the commands, the lines, and everything, right? It's just using the, the Git history. And so you can see here from my current change, um, Chris Nowicki made a ton of changes. And I can click on any of these and look at the diff for those changes, right? <clears throat> things that were changed on the left and then the the current changes on the right and i can look at that and look at like there's a scroll bar here too you can see like it's highlighted in, in red and green um, so i can easily go through any file and kind of see uh, all the historical changes that occurred in this file um, i can also bring those up if i want to i can right click apply the changes that are from you know, way back then into the current um, branch as well. Um, and then if I don't you know, want to see, I can just close it as easy as that. Um, I think Git Length is fantastic for that, to be able to view the historical value for uh, code changes, files, um, look at blame. Um, and I, I, I've had many times where there was a regression that occurred and we had to pinpoint where it was at. Once we pinpointed the line, the file, the function, we were able to see when it was changed, who changed it, and how to mitigate it. Get Lens alone was a lifesaver. It was it allowed me to find the solution faster, to revert things that were an issue, or even to provide a fix so that we can get um, our site that was down back up and running. The next tool that I wanted to show off was Ditto. Well, what is Ditto, right? So this is Ditto. Ditto is a clipboard manager. What it does is it saves all the things you copy on a clipboard, right? With, within um, an operating system, when you say something, it goes to the clipboard. But unless if you have a clipboard manager, it's not going to save the historical value of all the things that you've copied. So as you can see here, I have three links here. Um, but let's say I wanted to change these parameter names. Okay, so I have these saved right here. And these are simple names, but I just wanted to give them a better names. Um, so I'm going to do name ID, user ID, league ID, and selected ID. So the last thing I pasted was selected ID, right? Selected team IDs. And then next thing, if I wanted league ID, I would have to go back and copy that and paste it again. But with Ditto, I don't. I could just press down on my keyboard 
to the item that I want to paste, and it's there. It's on my clipboard history. As you can see, all these items are now pasted. Pretty cool, huh? Let's take this to the next level. Let's do multiple paste items. So as you can see here, the documentation names are incorrect now, right? So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to paste, and I'm going to select the last four items. They do have to be in order. Once I paste that, bam, Ditto can do that as well. Um, it's a combination of VS Code and Ditto, but it can definitely do that. Uh, I mean, we can do it here too. And boom, these are now all updated. One of the best features about Ditto or of any clipboard manager is as you're copying and pasting items, right? It just so happened that I had this list down here in the same page, so it was on the same file. But they, if they're in a different file or somewhere else, it's a lot easier to have it saved on your clipboard. That way you can just, you know, scroll through your clipboard saved items, press enter, and then it's there, right? And the last thing I want to talk about, well, of course, it's something with Microsoft, right? Is Copilot. So here's an example of how to use AI to benefit you as an engineer. I'm going to ask Copilot to create me a JSON object of all the NFL winners from week eight um, and giving me some data that will help me display uh, what I want for my users, right? So now I'm prompting it. And look at that. It's creating me a JSON object of all the teams. Well, actually, I didn't get all the teams. So let's prompt it again. I want all the winners. So it create is creating me a JSON object of the location, score, and current record of that team, right? So these are all the winners from week eight. So if I were to manually do this, I would either have to go to an API or manually find the scores and the records to figure out where well, how to create this, right? It, it's not going to take me seconds to do that. It's going to take me a couple minutes or even longer just to get all that data. But here's the cool thing, right? I don't want, or I want to use camel case key names. Please update. And look at that. It created me camel case key names, and um, now it's exactly what I want, right? But let's do this. I want to know who the head coach is. Add the head coach for each team as well. Can I do it? Yes, it can. Look at that. Head coaches for each of the teams that won. Filled it all in. I didn't have to do much to get that data. And let's take this to the next step, right? I'm using TypeScript, and now you need an interface for this data. Create me a TypeScript interface for, for this data. Wow, look at that. It just created an interface for me. Um, it may not be the structure I wanted, but it was able to do it. It created a team interface and then week eight uh, winners interface with all the teams there. Um, and they're off and running, right? Within seconds, you can create data objects and um, that are digestible according to what you want. You can continue to prompt it to your liking. Um, but as you can see, it took seconds to create what you want, this JSON object that I can now utilize, save it somewhere, um, and then display this data to my users. Uh, it's, the, it's an efficient way to do manual work, right? There's a lot of things that we can do with code and all that stuff, but there's certain things that we have to manually do as engineers. And using AI to help us do that, it's gonna make us more productive. In closing, let's look at the tools that I went over. First, we looked at Get, Crack, and 
Git uh, desktop. It's a Git GUI application that allows you to see the history of your repo. You can you can see local branches, remote branches. Um, you can you can see the stream of the history of a branch or multiple branches per se. You can click on files and see all the changes that are happening within it. And then the next item, we looked at Git Kraken's Git Lens. Within VS Code, uh, we were able to see that on that particular line that we wanted to change or we wanted to see who made that change, you can see that right inside the editor. But if we wanted to see the whole file's history, you can do that as well within uh, VS Code. So without going to command line, uh, both of these tools were fantastic because you have visual representations of historical value within the repo or your feature branch itself um, that gave you the power to do that without going to the command line. Next, we looked at Ditto, a clipboard manager. It allows you to save multiple things, put it in a clipboard manager, and then go back and retrieve them. It's such a fast way and efficient way because if you don't have a clipboard manager, you would have to copy and paste copy and paste over and over again, multiple items as you're trying to be more efficient. But if you have a clipboard manager, you can copy many things, go to the next screen, paste, drop down in your clipboard manager, find an item that you already copied before and paste it right away. You don't have to jump between screens. You can do it right there within Ditto's application. And the last thing that we went over was Microsoft's Copilot, the AI tool that um, is. And the last thing we went over was Microsoft Copilot, the AI tool that can answer a lot of your questions. Um, it's just like ChatGPT. You can add, you can ask some questions. You can build images with it. But the best thing is, as an engineer, it can do a lot of the manual work for you. We showed an example of how it constructed a JSON object for us. Instead of us doing it manually, it would have taken us a lot more time to do it. Copilot did it in seconds. And as we added more data to it, it already knew what we, what we wanted. Um, by utilizing these tools, it's going to make you a more efficient and effective engineer. One of the best things to do as an engineer is be an efficient individual, right? Like the tools I just showed you, a lot of these things will help you figure things out much faster. Um, we have so many things to worry about, right? Communication, business logic, um, making our code faster, finding errors, um, talking to leadership. Like there's so many things to learn as, a, as an engineer. If we can utilize tools like what I just showed everybody, it's going to allow the team to be more productive. We get to share ideas. We get to share the tools and tricks that we're using. Um, our team then can get more things done in an efficient manner and more accurately as well. Um, I don't know about you, but I love Get Kraken because it allows me to not have to think about memorizing Git commands and all of that. I can just get it done. I can just use the GUI get all my tasks done and be more efficient thank you for watching this session i hope that the tools that i was able to show you are going to make you a more efficient developer see you later thanks shashi for those insightful demos next up we'll hear from jay about the impact of code health on debex and what we can do to improve it